Well, Anne, before you come up and make your remarks, you see the program now says acclamation. So we come to shouts of acclamation. You are an uncommonly devoted friend, extraordinary teacher, beloved mother, expert grammarian, exceptionally inspiring orator, thespian fit for Broadway, universally popular advisor, powerfully competent administrator, esteemed mentor to global scholars, recognized English literary specialist, and authority on African American culture. You are Maya Angelou's phenomenally phenomenal woman. You are Hugh Gloucester's archetype of the educated person. You are Nixon Waterman's Rose to the Living. You are Morehouse College's Mother Superior. You are Thomas Edison's teacher of a thousand watts. <laughs> Life is for you. Love is for you. Abundance is for you. Joy is for you. As our bliss, creativity, and elegance. Your life's testament mirrors the words of John Wesley. Do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as ever you can. Follow your heart's boundless desire and enjoy the multiple dimensional pleasures of life. Fulfill your mission as a co-partner with the Holy Spirit in the unfolding drama of the universe. We shall always treasure our kinship with our beloved Dr. Ann Watts. Ann, you have achieved success, lived well, laughed often, and loved much. You've gained the respect of intelligent men and women and the love of little children. You filled your niche and accomplished your task. You have left the world better than you found it. You have never lacked appreciation of hearts and of Earth's beauty or failed to express it. You have looked for the best in others and given the best you have had. Your life is an inspiration, and your sterling legacy is your benediction for this evening. A footnote. Women often believe, especially at Morehouse College, that good job performance will naturally lead to rewards. The founders of Negotiating Women refer to this idea as the Tierra Syndrome, where women expect that if they keep doing their job well, someone will notice them and place a tiara on their heads. Well, tonight, Anne, I have the distinct privilege of presenting to you the first Morehouse Tierra. You have grown tall enough to wear the Tierra. <laughs> I'm going to ask my wife, Marva, to crown you.
Ladies, all the women, please rise. Because you're about to go up higher than you've ever been before. Because you are now heirs to the secret of how Anne has built those strong legs. <laughs> you see, what we've done tonight was preparation for what will occur at the end of summer school. When Anne steps off the stage, history will be made because there'll be a run on all the department stores in the city by the women. High heels will be available. <laughs> I would throw this like at a wedding, but I don't want to be sued. <laughs> You may be seated. Dr. Watts, the mic is yours. Dean Carter, Provost Chef Tall, and to all of you who are gathered here this evening, I am just overwhelmed. I, I just had no earthly idea that I meant this much to those of you, all of you that I love at this place, this institution that has been my home for a long time. And my son, Michael, kept telling me, Mother, when I go places and people discover I am your son, they tell me the stories of how you encouraged them when they were about to give up, how you threw them a lifeline. And he said, you don't even remember what you've done. I am just, I'm not, I can't tell you how I feel. But I'm going to be brief because I Really thank you for coming out in the rain and staying so late. That means so much to me. When I came to Morehouse College, my husband and I had just gotten married. We were newlyweds three months. I got a job off at Morris Brown, and then the president of Atlanta University recommended me to Morehouse College, and I accepted that job, just as I was about to accept the job at Morris Brown, because my husband had a job here and we wanted to be in the same city. I didn't have the privilege of working under Dr. Mays, but he was packing and moving out when he interviewed me. And he looked at me when I walked in, and I looked so young. You saw the picture with me sitting on the floor with those men around me, including uh, Dr. Carter, Harding Epps. The photographer thought I was a student, and that's why he said, well, why don't you just sit on the floor and let the men sit around you? <laughs> He had no idea that I was a professor here. And obediently, I thought, well, in Morehouse, this is what they do. So I, <laughs> I sat there. But Dr. Mays said, he was looking at me. He said, uh, are you married? I said, yes, sir. Three months, my husband and I. Where is your husband? I said, he's here, sir. What is he doing? I said, he's working on his ma master's in biology, and this year he should be completing it. He's in his second year. After a while, I, got, I said, wait a minute. This man doesn't want to hire me. And he's asking me questions. I said, I'm, I'm, Dr. Mays, Dr. Mays, I assure you, I'm happy to marry him. I'm not interested in these men or more house. I'm just going to do my job. And he fell out laughing and said, you are hired. <laughs> if I had not been married, he was not going to hire me. Wow. I, this uh, this is, uh, just a, um, has been a marvelous journey. But I've been trying to leave Morehouse for a while. And I'm not saying this negatively. I had just planned to do other things. Three years after I, my husband and I settled here, I got an off at Lincoln University. We talked about it, thought about it, and decided to stay in Atlanta. I 
uh, three years, well, two years ago, year before last, my pastor, Dr. Taylor, came to Founders Day, and he came to my office, and we sat and talked. At that time, I shared with him my desire to leave Morehouse and do some other things turn another corner. And I told him to keep that confidential, and he gave me his blessings, and that meant so much to me, Pastor Taylor. I wanted to, I would have left around the time, just before my husband died, suddenly of a heart attack. I turned another corner. Then my mother became ill uh, with senility and then Alzheimer's, and I turned another corner. And so finally, two years ago, year before last, uh, going on two years ago, Dr. Sheftal asked me what were my plans. I don't think he expected me to say I said to get to leave Morehouse and do something else. And he said, oh, no, you, you, you can't do that. You, 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 you can't. <laughs> so then last year, he said to me, Ann, what are your plans? I said, I really can't work any longer. I've got to go. I want to do some other things. And he said, Ann, you got to stay the first semester. Who's going to do all this work? I said, one semester. That was last semester. They, Ann, Ann, all of these things that happened the second semester, you can't, you can't leave. I said, Dr. Sheftal, only one semester. So I'm going to promise you. He became interim president, walked into my office and said, I'm ordering you. <laughs> As, that's what he did. He ordered me to direct the Morehouse College Summer School and the Morehouse College Summer Academy. Now, that may seem wonderful, but I've sent him my letter, and he has not responded to it. He threatens me. He threatens me. He said, I guess you know that I haven't answered that letter yet. And I said, and I guess you know I write my own answer. <laughs> I shall miss this place. Members of the staff, you are God's people. I know sometimes you feel undervalued. You feel that you're not making a difference. Remember, I'm a member of the staff because I'm out of the classroom. I want, you to I want to encourage you to be not weary of well-doing. Without the staff, dedicated staff here, Morehouse College would not thrive as it is thriving. <laughs> My colleagues on the faculty, you are invaluable. On Scholars Day, when I was calling those names, 3.4.0, and above, and these men, hundreds of them, walking across the stage, and periodically I thought to myself, excellent men walking. They were walking across this stage. With all the problems we are having at Morehouse College, one thing is still supreme. Morehouse has continued through rain and snow, through furloughs, through hard times, Morehouse has continued to produce excellent men of Morehouse who have become Morehouse men. And no matter whatever else we do, we must never stop producing great men from this institution. If we stop doing, doing it, there is no other place. And so, what has kept me here? I love my staff members, my fellow colleagues. I love my faculty colleagues. But it is the men of Morehouse that I love more than anything else. And when that glee club, I didn't know they were here. I thought it was supposed to be the quartet. And when they started walking across there, I lost it. It is the students who have kept me here. And we give you one uh, scenario and I'll sit. One day it was cold, it was, uh, the temperature was low, it was raining, and the room where I taught uh, was leaking. And I said, well, I'm going in here and I'm going to let the students go because I don't want them to get the flu. I walked in the classroom and read, waiting for them to say, Dr. Wise, we can't stay in here. One raised his hand, Dr. Wise, I want to ask you a question about what we talked about yesterday. Our revenge is sweet was an essay we were looking at uh, where this 
uh, lady who was angry at the Nazis for killing her family took a gun and she started shooting one of the soldiers and she pumped all these bullets in him to get revenge and she walked away feeling empty because the man was already dead. You couldn't kill him but one time. So revenge is bitter. It is not sweet. And so the young man raised his hand. Another said, well, I want to talk about that. And another said, I want to talk about that. Before I knew it, we were 30 minutes into the class. We were all huddled like this. But the men of Morehouse persevered, mindless of the cold and the rain and the leaky room and the raggedy building. They persevered. That is what has kept me here. And that's what I'm going to miss. You see a picture of me uh, there. I'm walking among the students. Look at my face. That is when I'm happiest. Not being an administrator, though I fun, we have fond memories of teasing Phyllis and listening to the wisdom of Dr. Sheftal and looking at Miss Key and said, I don't believe you said that. <laughs> I shall miss that. But my greatest joy has been walking among these men and being renewed and being revived every day I was spent with them. That is what has kept me here. And so as I leave, well, I'm not really going because the president has asked me if I would direct his inauguration, and Dean Darn has asked me to do something during freshman week, and Provost Sheftal has not responded to my <laughs> letter stepping down. But as I leave, I shall always remember this night, which represents everything that is wonderful and good and precious and blessed about Morehouse College. Morehouse College, Morehouse College, bless her name. I love you all. Thank you very much. May God bless you and keep you and be with you forever and ever and ever. I love you all. Thank you. I want you to depart safely, but I want you to observe the list on the back of the program, one name. The backbone of the preparation for tonight resulted from the creativity and the energy of Mr. Robert Bolton, class of 86. Robert, raise your hand. Thank you so very much. May God bless you.